Hi, I'm Vincent Field with DNBC TV, and I'm here with Andrea Ward. She is an award-winning film director, producer, writer, actress, stuntwoman, activist, author, vocalist, and entrepreneur. So that is quite an impressive resume. Can you tell us a bit about how you began uh, this path, which has led you through all of these different areas and a bit about your journey to where you are today? Yes, that is a great question. So originally I started out in the fashion world at age 17. I had been in fashion world for over a little over 15 years. And then eventually somehow I ended up on someone's Netflix set for a movie. And I got my first opportunity to act in it as well. And then I started to get more into production. And I took a leap of faith during the pandemic and I directed, wrote, and produced my first short film, which is called Deception Street, which is also award-winning, which geared me into my second film, Reborn Redemption, which is also award-winning, written and directed by myself, which I also directed projects for BET. I'm currently working on a BET film. And um, just honestly, just through networking, and I was able to create such an amazing platform from my fashion experiences through Art Hearts, Mercedes Benz, LA Fashion Week, and New York to give back to battered women and children. Great. Can you tell us about this current film that you're working on? Yes. So the current film is called Fiend the Awakening. Fiend is the opposite of friend. So this is a supernatural horror suspenseful thrill thriller about vampires. So, so far I have three celebrities starring in it. Uh, I am Key, uh, Kian and Nicole in Inc. Um, they're all signed to two different labels between Sony and Columbia Records. And I'm locking in my fourth celebrity. So that's actually like a surprise. I will be making announcements pretty soon. Um, when I wrote this film, it was more so for people that were always being different for their tastes and different genres of music. And I wanted to create more of a diversity when it came to supernatural and horror films. And I'd been writing since I was nine years old. And I figured, well, I wrote this years ago. I might as well turn it into a film. So I'm actually pretty excited about it. And I'm also studying um, and practicing with swords and film combat because I am also starring in the film as well. Wow, that's awesome. So you've won quite a number of awards for the films that you've directed and produced. Can you tell us more about these films? Yes. Yeah, so all my films, well, all my films have a lot of martial arts and stunt choreography as well, too. Um, all my films are derived from some version of the truth, a piece of the truth, whether it's from history, religion, or a personal experience from my personal life or a background or maybe something I've seen in the past. Uh, so all my films have a story within it and it has a purpose and also to spread more awareness in a way. Generally, yes, we all do need entertainment, especially, you know, with all the craziness we have going on in the world, but it's also important to create room and opportunity to share and shed life about the truth or to bring awareness to a certain issue or something that's socially like involving our community. Okay, great. So is there an overarching theme or message behind uh, these films and, and your endeavors? Yes. So there's a message within it. And the message is storms may last for quite a while, but storms are temporary. Storms will not last forever, but there's always light after a storm. So with that being said, the message is, regardless of whatever you're going through, you're gonna get through it. It's not forever, it's not meant to be for forever, but it's meant to teach a lesson or to share a purpose, if not share your own testimony and trials and tribulations. And when you see the light, that will be the new chapter of your life. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, so I understand that you are an entrepreneur. Uh, can you tell us more about your past and present uh, business ventures? Yes. So um, I dabble into music. Um, I used to be an investor for different concerts and 
different venues. I did that for about seven years. I've also um, written books. And right now I'm working on a comic book that I am also getting ready to release, which will also be into different schools, especially out here in the state of Georgia. It is a book for children with different disabilities and also to teach them sign language as well. I want also to a comic book uh, for kids with disabilities just to give them hope like regardless of whatever your disability is you have the capabilities to doing whatever you want to do if you believe in yourself um so there's that and then um i still write music from time to time for other artists there is a lot of things that i do um differently as well and then i work with different uh nonprofits, uh like there's black girls film camp there is the House of Ruth for battered women and children as well, too. So I actually do like writing courses with them and I teach them how to channel their pain into power and also how to get into TV and entertainment as well. And occasionally I will coach actors about what a director would want from them and how to execute that scene properly. Awesome. Um, so touching a bit upon what you just said, um, what, what advice would you give to someone looking to, to enter uh, these fields of work? Yes, um, the best advice, you will get many no's before you get a yes. All it will take is one yes to get your foot through the door, but you can't be discouraged about the no's and about people not willing to give you the opportunity. You have to prove yourself and to create a platform or the work or something to show that you are capable and that you are talented and that you are gifted and you could be in these different areas. And it's always important to learn more than one thing just in case you are needed in other areas. You can be thrown wherever and still excel because the film and music industry, it's not for the weak. You have to be really strong-minded you kind of have to be hard-headed in a way, regardless of how many no's you get, just think of it as a, it's gonna lead me to a yes. Great. So you're an activist. Can you tell us about the causes that you support and what exactly you've done in relation to them? Yes. So um, the number one cause that I do support is the you know, activism against domestic violence. I do personally come from a background. I'm a survivor. Uh, my first encounter was a little over 10 years ago. So since then, I've dedicated my life to the cause. I'll go into different shelters or different organizations and speak with these young ladies about what they're currently going through and that I was once in their shoes and that I literally came from nothing to now be an award-winning director, producer, writer, actress, Netflix credits, network credits, everything in the sun with a little under seven years and that, you know, that they're capable of doing it and that they're just going through a hard time, but they're going to get through it, you know. And I feel like it's really important to share your story because your story could potentially save someone else's life and inspire them to leave that, leave their toxic situation, you know, that situation is never good for anyone, especially when kids are involved too. Um, I definitely support um, homeless um, because it's never a good feeling to be homeless and you know, there's mental health going on. There's so many things and so many elements and variables that do go on about that. So a lot of times what I'll do is put together a fundraiser, raise as much funds as possible to give to them just to help get them off the streets or try to help them get an education. Or for you know the victims that are at House of Ruth, uh, a lot of times I will donate clothes personally or if they're lacking confidence within themselves and they don't deem themselves as beautiful, I will give them a free makeover just to show the beauty within them. You know, there are beautiful roles in this world. You know, there's so many things that I'm doing right now and then gearing up for this program to place them on, you know, movie sets and commercial sets to teach them the ropes of how to get into TV and entertainment, especially being guided by other people such as myself, other A-listers, celebrities, anyone that's willing to provide knowledge and valuable information to give back. Wow, that's amazing. So do you have any personal uh, role models who have influenced you? Um, Lisa Nichols, 
Um, me and Lisa Nicole, she's a world renowned public speaker. So me and her share a very similar story. And when I was going through my darkest times, I would listen to her podcast, her YouTube channel, and it helped me mold my mindset into what I needed to, to be in order to get out of those situations. Um, of course, my mom, my mom is such a beautiful, strong woman. Um, she motivates me, inspires me. Um, with her raising two kids on her own and just seeing how we turned out now. Definitely my mom. Um, definitely. I, I look up, up to Holly Berry. It may not be personal, but I look up to Holly Berry because um, she's come a long way in the industry, especially as a woman. It's 10 times harder to be a woman in the film world because you're, you're given a lot of no's or you're subjected to a lot of things and different elements. And you have to work 10 times harder because it's a male dominating industry. Right, certainly. I understand that you're related to a famous public figure from the past. Can you tell us about that? Yes, her name is Billie Holiday. She is the mother of all jazz music. Um, she's actually my great aunt. My grandmother grew up with her along with my grandfather in Baltimore. Um, I didn't find out about that until about five years ago. Me and her share a lot of Facial futures, um, similar in, in life stories as well. It wasn't until my grandma actually told me the truth about her, which made me super excited, but yet more curious about my family. Wow, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, must, must have been quite the surprise finding out about her. Yeah, it, it definitely shocked me. And then it wasn't just her. It was um, Billie Holiday. Madam C.J. Walker married into my family, uh, Henry Armstrong, and it goes all the way back to George Washington, who happens to be my ancestor. Oh, wow. So tell us a bit about uh, your acting, right? You're an actress. You've, you've acted in, in past projects. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so I've acted in a Netflix project called The Raincoat Academy. I, I'm not sure how that happened, <laughs> but it did, and which gave me my jump start. And um, the Raincoat Academy starts with King Vader, and it was directed by Writer Boy. Um, so they do a lot of things with Netflix. It's like a spoof of the um, Umbrella Academy, which was really cool. And a lot of my projects, I do star and act in it as well. Um, it's really great to be in more than one aspect of the film world. And I also study in film combat. Um, I study in different martial arts like Krav Maga, Muay Thai. I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. You know, it's a little over 10 years now. And so um, with Fiend, I'm starring in that as well. I'm starring in an upcoming movie. It's a military movie. I can't really say too much about it right now. I'm actually gearing up for training and more step work. Okay, great. Well, uh, you mentioned um, that you include martial arts in your films. So do you do that choreography yourself? Sometimes to a certain degree, um, but for safety purposes, I usually like to bring in additional help, like a trained stunt choreographer for that. Because martial arts, is, it's, it's cool but it's a little different from film combat. And film combat is just for safety purposes of film to make it look more realistic. Okay. Um, and that leads me to uh, you as a stunt woman. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yes, yeah, so I decided to go into that journey, I wanna say about six months ago, and I've been training consistently every day um, right now, possibility, I may be in the next, like, Marvel film, maybe not as one of the main characters, but, like, background first time, which is a start, you know, because this would be my first time, um, but so far for Reborn Redemption, I did do my own stunts, um, I don't know if you watched the footage, but where I get, you know, stabbed in the neck, that was an actual stunt, which was pretty cool, it looked very realistic, um, even looking back to this very day. Um, and for the upcoming film, I'm doing all the stunts myself. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so can you tell us about some of uh, the awards uh, that you've won uh, or your films? That is a lot of awards. Um, I know one of them is the LA Film Awards. I did win first place for that. I've won 
actually the Venice Awards, Florence Awards. There's a little over 20 awards and still counting. I don't remember the name of all of them, um, but I've won a good amount. Um, I know as of recently, there was another award, um, the San Diego Awards. Uh, we made it to semifinals. So there's a lot of awards. I don't remember all the awards, but it's, it's a good amount. For sure. Um, and is there one particular award that you are most proud of or that you believe is most prestigious? I would say the LA Film Awards. Um, it's known for the award shows and the amount of creatives that do come together creatively to showcase their artwork. Um, that's actually a huge deal um, because they help with distribution and getting your films onto different platforms and networks as well. Great. So uh, as a producer, um, do you produce um, any, any projects or films uh, beyond those that you write yourself? Yes, I do. Um, very seldom that I do because a lot of my projects take a lot of my time. Um, now, if it's something, let's just say a music video for BET, I will produce and write that, and that's someone else's project as well. Or if a label reaches out to me as far as, you know, creatively to, like, produce everything, I will do that as well. Or if it's a short film. It just depends on the concept of the project, whether it's a future film or a short film, but I do. Very nice. So out of all these different areas uh, that you work in, um, is there one that you find uh, most fulfilling? Uh, yes, um, it would be the directing and the writing aspect of it. Because um, when I write, it comes from an authentic, true place of truth and experience. And I get to write about stories that often go untold especially in the film world, because it's deemed as not important or a bit uncomfortable. And I guess I would be considered a rebel because I like to push those boundaries and to shed light on those issues and bring forth awareness too. And when it comes to directing, I direct from a true place, maybe because I've gone through that situation or that experience, or maybe I've witnessed something where so when I'm directing, it looks real, it looks realistic. The audience can connect with it. It's more so, the, the beauty of it is connecting with your audience and having your audience connect to your artwork is where I find the passion in it, the love in it. And, and, and that's why I fell in love with TV and film too, because you have the power to control the narrative rather than someone else controlling the narrative and telling the narrative that it's not true. Right. So, what are the plans uh, for the future? Uh, where do you see this path uh, leading you? Uh, this path is going to go very far. Um, I see this leading to many different award shows like the Oscars, the Emmys, the Cannes Film Festivals, internationally, international distribution, and so much more. You know, there's a lot of stuff in the works right now I can't really speak on, but that's what I'm foreseeing right now. That's great. And are there any other areas that um, you could potentially um, look into um, entering in the future other than the particular ones that you're currently involved in? Yes, definitely public speaking um, because I've been through pretty much just about every situation in life possible. And it's the mere fact that I'm still here, I'm still creating, I'm still inspiring others. So definitely TED Talks. Uh, I have been like peaking an interest in that too. And TED Talks is such a huge platform to be able to share your story and also like to share your content, whether it's your book coming out uh, or your comic book or whether there is, you know, like a list or some sort of information or a knowledge board for up and coming inspiring filmmakers or writers that want to get into TV and film. Yeah, that would be awesome. So, um, is there any, any, uh, anything else you'd like to share with the viewers before we wrap up? Yes, I am. Well, I mentioned I'm coming out a comic book 
a children's book called Little Miracles, and a book about my life and my journey from age nine up until now, um, how I channeled my pain into power. So my upcoming book is called Turn Your Pain Into Power. And this book is to inspire people that come from very traumatic situations or traumatic backgrounds and that you are not the victim anymore, you are the victor. And that's just to inspire more creatives to shed their life, shed their path, and inspire others just through their trials and tribulations and to make a difference in the world. Oh, that is great. And where can we find you? Yes, you can find me at www.redemptionimages.com, also social media, redemptionimages.com, and as well as Andrea, the creator, that is my public figure page, because I do a lot of public speaking at different schools, and I also mentor to little kids, too, that want to be up-and-coming writers or potential actors, actresses. Excellent. Well, thank you for talking with us today, and we look forward to seeing more from you in the future. Thank you for having me. All right.